the Nephilim sightings are going to start soon. Consciousness has been enslaved. Your consciousness does not need your physical body to survive. It's the thing that's necessary. It has to be there. It's the coding that projects this world we currently live in. I said, I want you to read the Bible. We got reptilians on just outside of our frequency zone. Six dimensional beings, the ancient builder race. Ideas are the highest form of intelligence, and that leads you to truth and clarity. The Nephilim sightings are going to start soon. Conspiracy <laughs> show? There's obviously aliens, our galaxy is insanely huge. We're just one planet. They would have needed a minimum of six feet of lead shielding in order to get through the 25,000 mile thick of Van Allen radiation belt. This is real. They really did fake the moon landing. The world is infinitely older than that. And I mean the world with human beings in it. Skull and Bones is like one of the villains in the Legion of Doom. I said, I want you to read the Bible. The Biblical Flood, the Tartaria Mud Flood, Conspiracy and Chill. The Nephilim sightings are going to start soon. The Bulldog Ball. I said, I want you to read the Bible. There's magnets in the basketball. There was a political party, a third party called the Anti-Masonic Party at a point in, uh, in the United States. The Global Pandemic Treaty. Conspiracy and Chill Podcast. All right, so I'm Banks Drennan. Uh, I've been doing some paranormal investigations recently. I've only done about three, and then I've investigated this really rough hotel. Um, I've been doing YouTube since I was 10 years old, but I think I finally found my shtick, and I'm just going to keep making some more investigations, and I'm here to talk to you guys about them. Yeah, bro, appreciate you doing this. Hey, no problem. I appreciate y'all for having me on. Yeah, I saw your... Uh your werewolf video dude and i watched that and then i saw the screamer and then i watched their hotel video or your motel video and then i watched um the bell witch yeah yeah that was so, the first one yeah it was pretty cool you're you're a young dude bro how old are you 18 holy oh, fuck that's you're that's a young that's man that's young yeah yeah so young. Hey, you're kind of like a, a paranormal thrill seeker i guess so i kind of just want to see everything you know fuck like, yeah I'm just where, starting. Where from? I'm from Middle Tennessee, like a few minutes outside of Nashville. Definitely a lot of creepy stuff down there. Oh yeah, definitely. Hey, are you familiar with? This is something that I've been getting into a lot lately. Is like the werewolf dogman thing. And are you familiar with? I think it's in Kentucky. It's called the land between the lakes. Mm -mm. Dude, there's so many fucking wolfman dogman sightings from that area. It's like, and it's only like, we're in Illinois. It's only like six hours from us. So I was like, huh, that might even be worth the fucking trip down there, dude. Cause like, I guess there's been so many sightings that go back to like the 1500s. And supposedly there was a massacre in 1982 where a wolfman actually like killed a family. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I've been kind of so going down that. That's in Kentucky. I think, yeah, it's the land between the lakes it's called. And I'm pretty is it sure. Just werewolves, or is there like other shit up there too? Dude, well, so there's a long story. They've seen dogman up there, werewolf. They've seen Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, history, I guess. Okay, so in like the early or like 1800s, early 1900s, people lived there, like rural, like it was out in the middle of nowhere. So the the government came in and they did eminent domain, which is they take your land. They can just come in and take your land and they offer you what they consider fair money, which isn't fair. So they kicked all these thousands and thousands and thousands of families off their land that was been in there probably forever. And they promised to, um, the reason why they did it is they were going to bring electricity to all these rural areas. Well, it, it never happened. So there's a lot of like resentment animosity in that area and supposedly it goes back to like like even before that the indians put like a curse on it you know who the fuck knows but it's a it's a like a remote place man it looks scary i need to go check it out i've been i've been meaning to uh start traveling outside of the state you know like the only investigations i've ever done have been just kind of around here like the farthest we've ever went was bell witch mm. and that was that was only 40 minutes away so i got i got some plans to go some other places soon you know that's cool. I was watching some of y'all stuff on Spotify earlier. I can't remember which one I was watching. Let me pull it up real quick. Some of them are pretty uh, out there. Paul, St <laughs> Paul Stobbs, I think. He's wild, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I heard him talking about... I can't remember what he was talking about. The fucking Nephilim, probably. Yeah, probably. It was like Christianity <laughs> or something. No doubt. This, this, that is title. First, this is the first podcast I've ever been on. Hey, let's go, man. Ever. Honored I've always to have wanted you. to be on one. 
Yeah, you'll definitely so, get more, bro. You'll definitely get more invite. Just keep doing what you're doing, dude. You're you're fucking you're doing good, man. I, I think your videos are are very well put together, dude. It's entertaining. Like I said, I fucking binge like four or five straight through it. I was like, oh, I wonder if we can get this dude on, man. So yeah, here we are. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I was up in a. You guys know like Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You ever heard of that? I've heard of Gatlinburg. Yeah. I was up there and I was just looking through, watching Instagram, and I saw that, and I was like, no way. It was like two o'clock in the morning. You're like, want to come on? I was like, hell yeah, I want to come on. So what would you think got you started? You just always had an interest in creepy, mysterious type of things, or you heard yeah. some local legends and wanted to so, investigate them? So like whenever I was a little kid, they told us about the Bell Witch, but oh, yeah. just trying to scare us. Like we were just <laughs> out there, they were just trying to scare us. And uh, my friend's dad was like, I mean, that's not real, man. Like, that's not real. I don't even know why you're interested in it. But I started watching so many videos on it when I got home. And so I always had that like interest in the Bell Witch. And one night, me and two of my buddies were, we left this movie theater that was like 40 minutes away. And we were watching Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. And whenever we were driving back home, we took a uh, back roads. And it was just real foggy, man. We were out there in White Bluff and it was real foggy. And we were like, dude, what's out there? Like, we can't even see right now. Like, what could be out there right now? And my friend was just talking about the White Bluff Screamer. And I was like, I wonder if it's actually out there. Like, I wonder if there's actually something out there. And so we started talking about the White Bluff Screamer. I'd heard about Werewolf Springs, started talking about that. And I kind of brought back the Bell Witch that I'd learned about when I was a kid. And then it just kind of like an idea, like sparked in my mind. I was like trying to figure out my place on YouTube at the time. Like I was, I think I was a junior in high school. And uh, I was like, that's what I need to start doing is going out there and trying to crack down on these answers, you know? So that's where it all started. What was the, the first hand uh, investigation? The first thing you went out and documented then? Oh, the first thing we did was the Bell Witch. Because that was like what started it all. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start with the Bell Witch. Because the thing that's hard about it, man, is like, there's nowhere to go. Like Werewolf Springs, there was a there was somewhere to go, like the Werewolf Springs, and like the White Bluff Screamer, there really wasn't anywhere to go. Just out there in White Bluff, like there's no destined spot. But the Bell Witch Cave, man, that's like kind of a tourist attraction. Like we paid like twenty five dollars to get in there. A bit of a rip off, but we just went up there, drove up there one day. Me and three of my buddies, we went and checked that out. Yeah, I kind of didn't do any for a few months until the White Bluff Screamer idea popped into my head. I think it's awesome that we have uh, young dudes like yourself getting into the game. And I really <laughs> like what you bring. You bring you bring a real level head to it, which I appreciate. You know, like every little noise, you're not like, oh, what the fuck? But at the same time, in your Werewolf Springs investigation video, you... Uh, you said you heard like this fucking heavy breathing and and that dude. was that fucking so when that happened i was like something something really happened because you don't strike me as a dude that was just you know you're not making shit up out there so can you tell us a little bit about that all right so at the beginning of that video like i talk about that noise at the end of the bell witch video and how it was fake because i didn't know it was fake i didn't know the dude swore up and down we made him swear on a bible that he didn't fake that noise and then one day we were out and about and I was like, did you fake that noise? And he was like, yeah, dude, that was that was fake. And I was like, why the hell? Like, why would you do that? And he was like, well, I was just trying to make the video entertaining. Like it was a boring video. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't want to fake shit, man. And what's y'all's y'all cuss on here? Is that cool? Please. Yeah, yeah. you're good. All right. All right. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, man, I don't want to fake anything. I was just pissed. Like, I don't know. It made me so mad. So in that Werewolf Springs video, I made that claim. And I didn't want to dramatize it. Like, I don't want to be out there and like, I see so many paranormal videos on YouTube and they're just kind of cringy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, I don't know, they over dramatize it, put this heavy music behind it. And I'm like, it's not that scary. Like I saw these dudes go to the Bell Witch, the same places I was at and it, they made it seem like it was terrifying, but it really just isn't that scary when you're there. I mean, like there's, there's animals out there in the woods, like I had to kind of understand that there was animals but when i was camping out there by myself i mean you can hear everything like you can hear every single squirrel that walks by every single gust of wind everything and i mean i was shivering the whole night just scared because i was hearing some heavy footsteps i think one time i probably heard like a deer or something because it was pretty heavy but then later in that night i was sitting in my tent around 11 30 and uh i was just thinking i was like man 
how the hell am I going to be able to sleep out here? Like, I'd almost fallen asleep, and I got woken up a few times. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to fall asleep out here. And I was just so close to falling asleep. I was so close. But then I heard a noise coming from probably, I said 20 feet in the video, but it was probably like 20 yards. It was like up the hill a little bit behind the shelter. It sounded like a ghoul, man. Like, it sounded more like a ghost or something than a werewolf, to be honest. Like, it sounded like it was a gust. Like, that's the best way I could describe it. it would be like a gust. But it was terrifying. It sounded like... It sounded like whispering, but breathing. I don't know how to make that make sense. An like ethereal I, sound. <laughs> it was weird, man. It was weird. And I mean, I, I heard it and I sat there for a second and froze. And I was going to film it. But whenever I turn my camera on, like it makes a kind of a, a noise. So I thought maybe if I turn my camera on, it might come and fucking kill me. <laughs> so I didn't. And then whenever I unfroze, I turned my camera on. And I just thought I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm not I'm out here by myself in a tent like i'm not gonna be able to fall asleep like i'm this thing might come and kill me in the middle of the night so i just got out didn't even zip my tent up i think i zipped it like halfway and it got jammed and i just hauled it back to the car but it was terrifying man it was really scary it was this real scary. is where you're camping near what's the uh bell witch cave no i was camping next to the werewolf springs okay i know a little bit about the bell witch not a lot do you guys want to go into a little bit of the lore around idea of what the bell witch is and what the werewolf uh yeah, springs sure. i've never heard of werewolf springs so all right go ahead so you want to talk about the bell witch or the werewolf springs you can give a little uh synopsis on both all right i'll start with the bell witch so like i'd always been interested in the bell witch watch videos on it when i was a little kid so basically there's a family the bell family and uh they had this house out in adams tennessee for a little while and they didn't have any problems but then one night they started experiencing some like really unnatural stuff. Like the daughters would get their hair pulled. They would get punched in the face while she was asleep. And like they would hear like rats crawling from underneath their bed and like scratching their bed frames, like rats scratching from the walls. And uh, they had like priests come out there and look and they claimed it as haunted. But eventually they just had to learn to live with it. And like it became a big deal, man. Like a bunch of people started knowing about it. And even Andrew Jackson came out there and spent the night at that house one night. And he left and he said, I'd rather take on the British Army again than try and sleep there. <laughs> so it was like that was like one of the first documented like paranormal things that was like a big deal in rural America. Because I think it was like early 1800s was when that happened. Which That's like a scary time period, dude, because there's no pictures of anything i think that's kind of scary so john bell he actually died in that house and he's the only i don't know if he's the only but i know that he was the first documented death to come from paranormal like encounters like how how, how do i even word that the first supernatural death in history i guess was john bell so i mean that's a big legend like a lot of people know that one that's more of the that's probably the most well-known one i've done was that he got like stabbed or something by a ghost or choked by the spirit? I have no or... idea. And the idea is that uh, someone from the Bell family haunts the area. And I think it was a previous person who lived on that land was who haunted it. Gotcha. I can't remember. I think they, the legend was that some woman got like burned in the fire pit or something. And she like claimed that land to be hers or something. I, I don't know. I don't know that far back. I just know about the, the Bell stuff pretty close to your area in tennessee yeah it's probably about 40 minutes out and it's, it's all like heavily wooded yeah man that town i'll tell you that town is so much scarier than anything about the bell witch <laughs> like you go out there there's nothing there's a dollar general we try to get interviews because i don't know if you've seen how i try and get like interviews of people well in the bell witch we did not get any interviews because we went to the dollar general it was the only place that was out there no one wanted to talk to you right no dude nobody to talk to and the people we did talk to were like get the hell out of my face like no way i will kill you like they were scary out there man like i'm from a pretty my town's not too like backwoods country it's a little bit but this place was like about as backwoods country as you can get up in Tennessee, man, it's rough. There is an eeriness to that and just the deep wilderness. And then the other one, Werewolf Springs, that's a location. Yeah, that's and a I'm location. I'm assuming there's uh, some werewolf lore behind it. Dude, I could go all day about that one. That's probably the one I know most about. So that's actually in a state park that's like not far from me at all. Probably like 15 minutes. It's this wow. park called Montgomery Bell. 
And in the back of it, there's this little area called Hall Springs. And I mean, there's so many legends behind it. The legend goes that there was a circus train leaving Nashville. And as it passed, it like derailed and a bunch of animals let loose. And there were these two animals called the Wolfmen of Borneo. And they got let loose and they were never found. Apparently, oh, they were, you like, can... as tall as a man, like killed people and shit. So the legend goes that they bred it, the legend goes that it was a male and a woman werewolf and they bred and they just haunted those woods i mean there's so many reports about like people seeing them people getting murdered out there like there's a story that the town hired a hunter to go out there and kill it and he saw it and he ran off like there's a bunch to go behind it but we talked to that guy in that werewolf springs video i don't know if sawbuck mike you've said you've seen it right yeah yeah i watched quite a few of your videos i binged them all right, cool, cool. But Tom, you haven't? I'm not sure. I, I'm a big paranormal YouTube guy, but uh, not right. too familiar. Go ahead and. So I talked to this guy named, uh, named Justin Spurlock because when I was researching Werewolf Springs, he'd actually written an article about it and he was a teacher at my school. And I was like, there's no way I'm not going to interview this guy. So I asked him and we went up there that same day and we interviewed him and he gave us the big spiel about it. He told us his experience behind it, like a bunch of legend behind it. But after we got done filming that episode, he was kind of skeptical on it. Like he was kind of different off camera than he was on camera. He was more like, yeah, man, I mean, the chances of there being something out there are very low. Like it's kind of a wild story, but he seemed to be very passionate about it. He said that he spent a whole summer in the Dixon Library, looking through newspaper articles to see if he could find the uh, the circus train wreck, but he said he couldn't find anything. So there's some skepticism behind that legend. But I mean, with my personal experience of what I heard, I think that there's probably something back there. Like, I don't know if it's some big animal or if it is a werewolf or a ghost or what. There's like three cemeteries out there too. Who knows, man? There really could be something out there. I think that there more than likely is um are you familiar with bachelor's grove cemetery uh-uh is that in tennessee that is in illinois that's mm-hmm. very close to where i live and, and it's yeah it's it's considered right one of the now. most yeah that would be a place for you once you start traveling because i mean even tennessee and illinois not too far but we could even fucking usually do one with them yeah that'd be crazy bro be i'd be crazy. so down because i used to go there all the time it's a cemetery in the woods it's largely considered one of the most haunted uh woods or cemeteries at least like top 10 it'll make a lot of those like lists like around the midwest and uh one of the most famous pictures ever considered oh, yeah. real is from there it's if you really? if you google search the madonna of bachelor's grove you're going to see a picture of a woman ghost sitting on a tombstone and that was taken by a legit paranormal agency like in i don't know when i want to say the 80s and they they believe that's like 100 percent authentic you talking about this yeah yep <laughs> yeah it's got bro. a lot of lore around it like native american lore going way back then a cemetery there's a lagoon that would apparently like capone and like mobsters would drop bodies in uh mm-hmm. there's a lot of cult rumors like that there was like satanic or whatever type of activity going on there and it's just like a very uh superstitious and hyped up place and i've been there a whole bunch but i was kind of alluring this to i have seen i had my own dog man encounter there no way. And like, as I remember it and reflect on it, I think I've told a little bit about it on this uh, show. If not, it was when I was a guest on someone's show, but I'll go over it real quick. I was with a friend. We were wandering around in there. It was winter, too. So, like, it's pitch black, middle of the night. But, you know, when it's winter and there's snow on the ground, you can see pretty well in the woods and the trees yeah. are barren. So, that creates a little bit of visibility, even though it's super laid out. And you go in the cemetery, but then there's just a bunch of woods. As we're walking around the woods, I swore we heard some sort of like weird growl or some shit, but again, you know how it is when you're out and you're doing spooky stuff. You're like you, you tend to overlook because yeah. you're trying to keep yourself calm. You're like, not every noise is something to, you know, be jarred about, but we did take note of something we heard 30 minutes later or so. We have to walk through the cemetery to get back out. And there was a large crouched like black figure that was on hind legs, but it, it was very like hunched back and huge. I suppose it could have been a guy in like a trench coat, just, there by himself in the fucking graveyard but uh you could see between the legs clearly because of the snow like that it was just like big and in like a crouched position and we we're probably i don't know 50 yards away but my friend and i didn't even say anything we just looked at each other looked at that and like 
just took off running and kept our eyes on it until we were out of sight. But once we were running, dude, I, it felt like a, a very primal fear. Not like a, what was that? Let's get out of here. More like a, like There's you're going to be chased. Yeah. yeah. Like predatory, well, like get the fuck out of here. You're prey. So even, the, even if it was just some dude in a trench coat, like the hell is he doing out there? Still really? Yeah. It's someone I don't want to so run weird. into. <laughs> dude. To, yeah. So for, to explain bachelor's grove a little bit, to even get to the cemetery part, you have to walk through about, well, just about a mile of forest preserve. You're parking down the street at night, illegally trying to, and it's off of a pretty busy road now, the entrance to the forest preserve, although Tom knows a back way because he's been there way more <laughs> than me. My point is you have to walk about a mile through a dark, scary forest preserve on this narrow trail before you even get to the gates of the cemetery that which is bachelor's grove yeah that's how that's how werewolf springs was <sighs> it's terrifying bro it like, is, man. i've been there a handful of times but never i mean i've you know it's felt weird but i can never i can't say i've seen something like that but you know things don't feel right there you know i will say that and i've been talking about it a lot recently where i've been looking into like dog man and wolf man a lot and I thought I was going to easily be able to just, this is a silly one, you know? But yeah. I, what I'm finding is there's so much fucking evidence for it being legitimate. I mean, there's so many people that seem credible, like cops and and uh, military guys that have sightings. And it's like, I don't know, man. It just makes me wonder. It's fucking terrifying. There's, You said State Park. Are you familiar with David Politis? David Politis, he is a former cop who does the missing 411, where he investigates all these disappearances that happen in these state national parks. He's super famous, David Politis. Just uh, Google I'm missing missing 411. And he puts together all these disappearances that have crazy, like unexplainable coincidences, and they all happen in these state parks, uh, national and state parks. And how the government is basically conspiring to keep it from us because that's so many billions of dollars a year in tourist revenue. He kind of alludes to it being like a, a Bigfoot or a supernatural or aliens or he doesn't really, he won't say definitively what he thinks it is, but he kind of alludes to it in a lot of his books and interviews. Yeah, dude, there's something out there, right? Yeah, that's definitely. Definitely. Pretty much what I was going to allude to is like... uh the forest aspect of it and like banks you said something about a legend of two physical actual you know potential wolf man or weird like hybrid like who knows maybe government made but more of like a physical animal out there but since yours it was in like a paranormal hotspot type of place and same with when i saw it at bachelor's grove or something like do you believe it's probably something to do with when mike was talking about the missing 411 there's some sort of like spiritual uh or like something about the locations or maybe deep woods that Dimensional. kind of has like a crossover yeah to where these dog men these wolf oh, definitely. creatures and like it's all uh rather than like a physical like a like a bigfoot type of animal that it's interdimensional or spiritual or like a demon something like that do you get Listen, that vibe i kind of do like i'm very skeptical like i'm very skeptical about all of it like i do not know if any of it's real and i don't know if any of it's fake like i'm just out here trying to get my answer on it but I saw something today. Hang on, let me pull it up real quick. It said, um, paranormal experts say there may be a portal in English forest letting in werewolves. Yeah, so, fucking like, hey, bro. Maybe, maybe Fuck. there's a portal out there in Hall Springs letting them in, you know? You never, <laughs> you never know. Like, it could be paranormal. It could have came from a train wreck. It could be government made. It could be just a legend to try and get tourists to the park. It could be anything. Because Werewolf Springs isn't even actually called Werewolf Springs. It's called Hall Springs. And... The park doesn't really talk about the werewolf aspect of it because, I mean, probably would scare some people off. So you never know, man. Like, it could be paranormal. I mean, especially with all those old-ass cemeteries out there. Like, I mean, there's graves that date back to the late 1700s out there. You never know. You really it, don't. It really is, uh, you know, just kind of anything that we don't have a explanation for officially, in quotes, or, you know, that science doesn't acknowledge or doesn't fully know how to explain yet is just considered uh you know fringe or crypto or paranormal whatever you want to call it yeah. they used to call it spiritualism or other types of things i will say though and i would actually like to get this guy on here eventually too once time at bachelor's grove there was a he considered himself like the groundskeeper i guess he ran the website but he's just a guy who was very obsessed with bachelor's grove that i met there 
And he kind of changed my thinking on this too. And I don't know if it was his original theory or whatever, but right next to this Bachelors Grove Cemetery, within like a couple blocks is a large ass old radar tower, like a turning tower for like airport grids or something like that, I imagine. But it's a big like rotating radar tower, cell tower, airplane tower. I'm not sure exactly the purpose. Anyway, he said that those, wherever there's like big things like that, there's usually paranormal hotspots, so places all around the world. Who knows? Maybe the Hollow Springs or the Werewolf Springs that you were talking about. And nearby, there's probably some sort of a weird conductor that was, you know, opening probably. up. Yeah, exactly. A hot just spot like, of paranormal activity. Just like that portal was talking about and that thing I just talked about. Yeah. I mean, that and, park, it's 4,000 acre park and it's just a bunch of unmarked land that people don't really use, you know, like there could be any there could be anything out there. You never know. I think that ancient uh, cultures too, when they would erect like a giant standing stone or stone circles or like some grove in the woods, they knew that was like the closest place where like the veil was thin or whatever, that they could communicate with the spirits or they would see them or they'd come in and out. And you said you're skeptical on most things and you're trying to prove it. And I love that uh, mentality for it. Cause like Mike said, it's, it's a lot better than the kook or a Zach bag. It's like, wait, what? This is real. Look at this. And like, just trying to, you know reach for those grapes but is there anything that has made you be like oh shit like completely flip the script anything you've seen or been documented or gone out and witnessed right. personally so before i get into that question i have a question for sawbuck mike you the guy that you were talking about the uh dave politis yeah. is that the guy who mr ballin talks about oh he's talked about him quite a bit he's referenced that's, his that's work that's what i was thinking yeah that's what i was thinking all right so back to your question now all right um definitely whenever i was at the bell witch cave um like i said that noise that we caught at the end of it like the dude said it was fake it was just him in the mic but before that at the very back of where you can go to in the tourist attraction there's like this huge room and it's just dark and there's a pool of water it's like crystal clear water and everybody else had started going to the front of the cave but i stayed back and i didn't have my mics turned on and I feel so stupid for not having my mics turned on. But I was hearing just like noises. Like it sounded like whispers, but you didn't understand what they were saying coming back from that cave. So that shit was weird. That was really <laughs> weird. And uh, with the White Bluff Screamer, I didn't experience anything. I think that's probably just like some sort of cat or something out there in the woods screaming. I don't, I don't think that's anything. But with Werewolf Springs, definitely that noise that I heard at the end of the video, the gust of just whisper and howling kind of sound that was scary man like i'd been hearing noises all night and i brushed it off because i was like i mean dude it's probably just squirrel deer or something you never know but this noise was something it was something a lot more major than that so that kind of that that's something that i think is proof me personally i like that you alluded as a otherworldly sound like you're a guy who lives in the nature you're camping in nature you're hearing other yeah you know natural sounds and yeah something about about that one i think you used the term ghoulish definitely would have been alarming to hear out there yeah that was definitely the best that's the best way i could describe it was ghoulish it's because at first i was like that's a fucking werewolf but now that i think about <laughs> it, it sounded way more like a ghoul this is kind of pissing me off because i was just listening to um the confessionals merkel's podcast and they were talking about it's a CERN-like Hedron Collider, and I don't remember if it's in Kentucky or Tennessee. Oh, you're kidding. Yes, and they even said they wanted to, their goal was to open portals. The scientists said this, and then they retracted it. They were like, oh, it's a joke. Scientists don't <laughs> joke. Scientists don't joke. But my point yeah. is, that's not too far from you. There's a lot of supernatural activity that we've been talking about, kind of reported in that area. And if you Google the U.S. equivalent to the Hedron Collider, you're going to get to Fermi National Laboratory in Batavia, Illinois, which is 15 minutes from my house, bro. Damn. Right. You know about fucking the Fermi, the Fermi Lab, right? Mm -mm. I don't know anything about that. Um, I'm new to all this, man. You got to educate me. Yeah. Fermi Lab is, um, it's like you've heard the, the Fermi Paradox is like, if the aliens are out there, why haven't we seen them? It's that guy that coined it, but it's a secret lab. It's like not a secret. There's Everybody knows it, that it's there, but what, as far as the research goes, they, they're like splitting atoms and doing like like smashing particles into each other with accelerators like CERN is doing in, uh, where's where's CERN, like Switzerland or some shit? Yeah. Or, and yeah. 
yeah, what they're like, a lot of people have theorized that what they're doing there is trying to open like stranger things, like trying to open portals to different so dimensions and shit, dude. And it's like, I don't know, it just makes you wonder, like, there's, like Tom was saying, like, there's always some kind of, like, military installation, even with a lot of UFO sightings. You know, like, mm. if you grid those, the frequency of sightings and paranormal events around military installations, I don't know, man, correlation doesn't always indicate that it is so, but it fucking definitely makes you wonder, you know what I mean? Like, coincidence? Yeah. I don't know, man. You know, do, yeah. you, do you have a lot of military bases out by you? Yeah, we kind of do low key. Like we got, there's a park just five minutes down from me and it's got a base where they keep a bunch of Humvees and stuff and they have a bunch of military equipment, but like super secret ones like Hawkins lab, man, I can't really think of any, but there's a bunch of weird like places out here. Like there's a bunch of factories. There's a bunch of huge buildings that nobody ever talks about. Like nobody ever talks about them. There's huge buildings out in the power. And I've always been kind of skeptical on those a little bit because yeah, I mean, right. I loved, I loved stranger things because that came out whenever I was quite younger and that kind of always opened my mind to it. I mean, even when I was out there in the woods in werewolf Springs, like I was thinking, I was like, what if some Demogorgon type thing comes out and tries <laughs> to kill me, man? <laughs> so I was thinking, I was thinking, I've thought of that. Maybe the werewolf came from some sort of portal. It's definitely possible. It's definitely what, what you're doing is definitely exciting. You got to feel like you are on a monster quest or, or something in a way, even if you don't yeah. think you're going to find anything or if it's real, like you are setting out to, you know, you're seeking the mysterious, which is your badass. Mind, your mind thinks for the worst sometimes, man. Like <laughs> you're out there and you're like, oh my God, like it's so much scarier than what you think. For sure. It's for scary. sure and that's a brutal mindset uh what are you trying to go for next uh i mean i don't want to explore just paranormal like i like, like you want to urbex and stuff too urban exploration you yeah, try yeah. to go to these abandoned buildings and like like i want to one of my biggest goals in life is to go to chernobyl like that's be wild <laughs> i always wanted to go to chernobyl and like i want to see the things that i've always heard about but like i've never nobody's ever gone and done like you know behind behind mount rushmore there's like some abandoned hallway yeah, I've like, never heard of that. Yeah, there's supposed to be like, yeah, there's supposed to be some shit back there. Yeah, yeah. that's I've always wanted to go there. Like, dude, if I get inside the pyramids, make a video inside the damn pyramids, that would be cool. Like, that's the goal. That's the big goal. But right now, like, I'm planning on doing just more paranormal stuff. Like, I got a trip planned for the next few weeks. I'm going to drive to West Virginia with a few buddies and we're going to do the Mothman. Oh yeah, let's go. That's, that's a more known one. So I figured like that could kind of bring some traction to my channel a little bit. And then I got a video planned where uh, there's a sunken town in a few a few towns away from me. There's this river. I think it's the Tennessee River. And in the 40s, they destroyed a dam and it wiped out the whole town. Like they got everybody out. But all the buildings are still down there. And like there's this huge grain elevator that pops up over the water that people go and visit. Like they have parties on top of there. But nobody ever talks about that town. And I feel like if I got one of those underwater drones, rented one of those, wow. flew it down there and looked to see if there's actually still buildings down there and interviewed some of the people that are out there in that town, that could make a good investigation too. Like just things like that. Just the weird anomalies out there, you know? Sick. How many subscribers you got on YouTube right now? Right now I got 1,500. I hit nice. 1,500 a few days ago. But hopefully I can get to 10K by the end of the year. That's my goal. Good shit, bro. I'm definitely going to give you a follow. What's the channel called? Just my name. I'm sure I've come across some of your videos. Just literally hours of YouTube shithole on anything mysterious or paranormal. Or That'll do it. I'm sure That'll I've come it. across it, but I'm definitely going to sure. support that. I'm pretty sure on my YouTube studio, it said that's how people come across my Werewolf Springs videos, just from other fucking weird videos. Yeah. Nope. yeah. You're in the right place now, buddy. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I searched... The Hall Springs, and I searched how close that would be to what we were talking about earlier, the land between the lakes, and you're only about two hours and 15 minutes from there. Yeah, real so, close to Kentucky. Like, we go up there a lot. Yeah, that would be an interesting one, too, because, um, dude, honestly, from from the things that I've heard and the stories I've heard, it, it sounds fucking frightening. Like, this one guy who used to be a cop, while his, his, and when he's telling his story, a firefighter was killed the night this night and him and his buddy saw not only did they see two werewolf men but he saw two bigfoot too and he doesn't know if the two bigfoot were trying to protect him from the wolf men or not 
but you got to hear this guy tell the fucking story, <laughs> That's bro. So fucking crazy, dude. He even says it. That? He even says it. He's like, listen. He's like, it's fucking stupid. Doesn't none of it make sense. He's like, you shouldn't believe me because it's it's this is but this is what happened, <laughs> and, and and man, like he's either a really good actor, you know, or I don't know, man. But it's yeah. it's a real famous case. He I discovered him on Merkel's podcast too, The Confessionals. Uh, it's a really good podcast, Banks. If you're into this kind of shit, which oh, yeah. seems like you are, <laughs> into it for sure. Yeah, the uh, Mothman. You know, uh, so you're going to Point Pleasant, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. You're going to go out there and probably hopefully get some good interviews. Hopefully, go out there get some good interviews first. And uh, my buddy's actually been out there with his dad, and he said that they found like a bunker in the woods out there. Where the, he said down that road, you get like no cell service. It's like pretty far away from the town, but. There, he said that him and his dad found a bunker. He said they didn't go in it, but it looked like it was opened and you could just go in it. But there was a bunch of abandoned military equipment in that bunker. And like, what the hell? Like, there's a abandoned military bunker where the Mothman sightings are. Like, just back to what y'all were saying. Maybe it's a portal, man. You never know. And it's they knew portal. that they released some shit and they were trying yeah. to get so, ready to attack him or capture him. I mean, like... I don't know if I'm going to come across anything paranormal, but I just want to go out there and make a video to show what is out there. Like, I want to do mostly about that bunker because, like, that's weird, man. That's so weird. That'd there be sweet to, be, to find that. Yeah, there needs to be some answer questions out there in Point Pleasant for sure. There was some Mothman activity in Chicago uh, a few years ago, and I don't know if it still goes on, but, yeah, people were seeing it here in Chicago. I didn't know it went out all the way up there. There's a couple of it's famous photos from the yeah, chicago really. sightings it won they they a lot of people label it as pterodactyl but yeah it's like it's it's obviously so you could like make out the arms and the where the feet are and the way dude yeah it was a great demon gargoyle. yeah could be yeah gargoyle demon who the fuck knows but again going back to like a police officer saw it so it's like you know it's not like they shouldn't be fucking held in any more high regard however they are trained to observe. They are trained to yeah. be, you know, with it in the moment. And, and like, tell the truth, too. Right, you know. So it's like that kind of adds a little bit more credibility, you would think. But, yeah, I, I, I reserve the right to be skeptical and everything, too. But it's just sometimes it's just it's like, wow, either everybody is fucking crazy and full of shit or there's something. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. That's that was one of my big things about Werewolf Springs too. Is like, what if it's just a bunch of yellow journalism? You know, like, what if it's just a bunch of phony lies trying to get people to, I don't know, believe some weird, wacky story that they made up? But on the other hand, like, there's so many reports of weird shit happening out there, man. And even I like experienced something weird out there. So I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know. Like, obviously, everything the government tells us isn't, you know, true. But there's some conspiracy theories that just go so out there you know like it's like no way there's no way but that's what i'm here to do man is trying to answer all those questions Fuck yeah love it i tend to think it's it's way crazier than even we can theorize or think sometimes like i i yeah. like to tell people yeah dude you like watching marvel movies or whatever like yeah i know you universe love there's some crazy shit people. yeah we all did but then you think the world we're in is fucking 10 times crazier than that yeah, behind exactly, the scenes exactly what's uh like we all have like certain ones that like we're super interested in like tom is loves like druid stuff and i love alien shit like what's uh do you have like a, a certain one that certain I one like, that you're super into more than the others i like i like alien shit but that's probably not the most one that i'm interested in the most i guess just kind of like old folklore legends because like i grew up watching gravity falls dude that was my stuff whenever i was a kid it was gravity falls and just the weird stuff out there that people have reported seeing like gnomes and elves and like oh yeah bro werewolves and just zombies just weird shit like that that's what's always kind of i don't know what kind of category that would be would that be druids cryptozoology i would say yeah, crypt cryptids that's it crypto i have my dog man sighting i've seen some orbs i've I've seen some strange lights in the sky. I had some, you know, haunting stuff with an abandoned house across the street from me. And when I was little, think the uh, the house was haunted and whatnot. I think the thing that would terrify me the most, though, it makes me want to do it though, is being out camping in a tent, not knowing what the fuck is right outside that tent, or say you're in like I don't know your car, or just like something is just outside of a little barrier to you in the darkness in the wilderness and. 
that shit's wild to me. So I'm a I'm giant pussy fucking doing that. I'm a giant. <laughs> you're <laughs> never catching my fat ass out there by myself. Nope. If you guys want to do it with me, I'm in. But by myself, you're a better man <laughs> than me, Banks. Bro, I didn't plan on doing it by myself. My plan was to have my cameraman, Jonathan, and my buddy Asher to do it with me. But Jonathan had something pop up because we planned on doing it the day before because it was a full moon. And I was like, there's no way we don't catch something. Oh, week. my God. But somebody had already booked the site. Like, it's a, it's a site. It's a primitive campsite in the back of Montgomery Bell you can rent. And somebody had already booked it. And uh, so we had to do it the day after. And Jonathan had something pop up. And Asher, he made up some bullshit excuse. I don't I don't think he was just scared. <laughs> Asher, you got to get it in the tent. You Asher, if you're watching these monsters this, bro, with this guy. If you're watching this, Asher, <laughs> you left me so high and dry out there, man. Come on. Come on. But... Yeah, it was terrifying, bro. It was so scary. I was watching. Y'all ever watched the Outdoor Boys? May have come across it before. He's like that guy. He goes out in camps. I was just watching him, trying to stay comforted. Scary. I uh, I imagine it could be hard to find recruits to go on the Monster Quest sometimes. But hey, you're gonna yeah. make some uh, some connections now. You're getting your content out there, getting on some podcasts. I think if you come to Illinois and want to do a Bachelor's Grove one, me and Mike would love to join. That'd be badass. Yeah, that'd be sick. That would actually be fun. I'm I'm down for that. I got these two people that I normally film with. Their names are Jonathan and Jack. And Jonathan's this like huge dude. Like he's like six six, like massive dude. So it's good to have him there, you know. And he's a good cameraman. He's a damn good cameraman. And I've started to like pay them a little bit. As if I start making money off these videos, like I want to hook them up, you know, like kind of, of build course. a team, kind of build a team. Because, I mean, Definitely you can't do. do it all by yourself. That's no, the, the hard part. not at all. I've learned that, and I could learn a little from you, too. I, I got a YouTube channel for, like, my martial arts and my grappling stuff, and it's uh probably just under, like, 900, 850 subscribers or something. I'm working my way to 1,000. Yeah, you, you probably started just getting paid after you got that 1,000, so I've, keep it up, I've dude. never made a cent off any of it. No? No, I've been doing I it thought once I you hit 1, 1K that... uh you can get some monetization uh, or something. You got to hit 1K and then you got to get like 3,500 watch hours in like a year or something. Huh. So it's it's wild. Like if I just what was your what was your early YouTube content gaming? <laughs> no man, it was rough. It was like me in my backyard, like screaming at the camera and like jumping <laughs> on my trampoline. Hey, that's just fun little kid shit. Yeah, man. Because I like I grew up. That was the cool thing to do was to be a YouTuber, you know. So I tried to do it myself. And then once I started trying to do it, like it kind of like locked into my head. Like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I never gave up. And like, I never, never had like a shtick, I guess you could say. I never had like a, what's the word? A genre that I was involved in. But I just kept making videos until we were driving home that night. And we were talking about the weird shit out there in White Bluff. And I was like, you know what, man? I think this is what I need to do is do some investigations work my way yeah. up to doing the more crazy investigations yeah man i love youtube like it's it's kind of like gives me a purpose you know what i mean like i wake up and i think like dude i need to get i need to get on this like it gives me motivation yeah you're inspiring me dude i uh am definitely not the most technically proficient guy mike handles all that here as far as the tech and the editing and the video and whatnot i'm i'm pretty primitive with it but it is fun and it is cool like so many people watch YouTube, dude. So you put out a video, yeah. you think nobody's fucking watching it, but hey, your videos might reach out to you. Boom. Now here we are talking like you had those ideas that inspire you to do it. So that's what I need to remind myself sometimes to just make the damn video. Yeah. I've always heard, man, make what you love and love what you make, man. Just get it out there. Fuck yeah. And whenever you have those profound moments, like it just hit you. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. And then it starts a fucking journey that you couldn't have imagined where it would take you no never dude i never would have thought i'd be on a podcast talking about this shit right now well somewhere deep down i think you did because you started creating shit that just aligns with it and yeah making content and finding your stick and you're a young dude and you're already going for it love it bro appreciate it man hey so you're a uh what do you do you're a mma fighter i dabble <laughs> i have fought in mma i've cornered a lot of mma fights i mostly stick to competing in uh like submission grappling and catch wrestling and jujitsu, different styles of grappling martial arts mostly. But yeah, I'm pretty immersed in the combat sports world. He's a mul he's a multi time world champion catch wrestler. He's he's very modest. Yeah. What is ca what is catch wrestling? Submission so, wrestling. Yeah, oh, imagine okay. WWE if it was real. Like if it was oh, just hey. uh pin the guy or make him tap out. So it's jujitsu okay. with pins, 
or you could say it's like high school college wrestling with submission holds that's cool man i've never it's heard of that pretty sweet yeah most people haven't nowadays but uh it's definitely on the comeback that's cool as long as you're the best it's something man he's a black belt yeah. in jujitsu too hell yeah bro i'm not gonna pick a fight with you guys yes yeah, so i'm <laughs> saying i'll have uh fucking tom will be my bodyguard out there out there because yeah i ain't go i'm no match for a werewolf <laughs> yeah dude. i don't know if, i don't know if any of us are or a match for uh something in the spirit realm but i always did like uh you you guys obviously probably watched ghost adventures right uh, yeah yeah i've seen think, him i don't think i did with zach bagans it? it's pretty old though it, it might even honestly be before your time banks or you would have been really little but yeah it was like one of the first real popular ghost shows where they would go do investigations and i know they eventually did start faking shit mm -hmm. on their boring episodes but uh yeah zach bagans was like this yeah for sure it does this zach bagans guy was like this jack like 2000s uh affliction bro like spiked hair tattoos and he would always try to like intimidate the ghost and have like this this hard ass presence like come out ghost like you, you want to do want to mess with me why don't you come out and like say something knock on the door like just very uh arrogant bro type of character i always thought that shit was hilarious but hey whatever you got to do to crease the, the that could be you man that could be you out there <laughs> let's go i'll be the next zach baggins Dude. Well, I'm sure that you're going to be on more podcasts, bro. And we will, uh, we'd love to have you back. Like, you know, let us know when you're, uh, when you do the fucking Mothman or, uh, any of your other ones, you know, let us know, bro. We'd yeah, fuck, we'll sure. have you back for sure. I appreciate y'all for having me on, man. Yeah. Anytime. What? Let everybody know where they can find your shit. All right. So my name is just Banks Drennan on everything. It's just my, my middle name and my last name. It's name I've always went by. Kind of post on Instagram. That's more of just personal stuff. But YouTube is my main focus. If you guys want to see some cool investigations coming out soon. I mean, I just got out of high school. I got all the time in the world to be putting time into YouTube now. So just go to Banks Drennan. Trying harder a little bit, you know. Getting a team together. Got some more equipment. Got some ideas. Just go there and check it out. Love it. Definitely give him a follow. Check it out. I know I'm going to. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of your stuff, bro. I appreciate that, man. And real quick before we go, I just want to say you graduated high school this year. I graduated high school like two weeks ago. So did my daughter. Awesome. Really? Uh, awesome. I have an 18 year old daughter. So it's just it's a trip. Wow. It's a trip for me. So, yeah, I love what you're doing, brother. Keep it up, man. You got the whole fucking you got the world by the balls, bro. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate y'all. Banks Drennan. Thanks. Yeah, I was afraid. Of, I don't know if I called him Brooks, but I kept thinking I was afraid I was going to call him Brooks. Due to having Brooks on twice. I, uh didn't know a lot about the young gentleman i know you set this one up if uh anyone out there is trying to get on the show and talk to us just be persistent and patient uh you got two adhd spazzes running the show who are wearing a lot of hats at once <laughs> but that being said what a young gentleman what a fine young gentleman we just talked to right there and uh the fact that he is so young and chooses to explore mysterious fucking cool topics like that instead of i don't know uh skibbity toilet fortnite riz or whatever the fuck, <laughs> whatever the fuck something is. someone his age could be uh going for he's a mature young man and he's got some balls he seems like a good young man i mean he's got his head on straight you know he's well spoken he seems intelligent he seems humble at 18 he's like you know he's willing to tackle the obstacles out there and yeah dude that's good shit we need we need that you know because I'm an old hat. You're you're not old yet, but in ten years you will old. be. Yeah, I feel you, old. You know, yeah, you, what your body is because you fucking put it through. You know, you put it through a lot of uh, a lot of anguish, but you know that's what you do. I, I could never go. I mean, props to him. I I would never. And I saw the video. Did it, it was fucking scary. And yeah, I could vouch for him. He. He took off, and when he came back the next morning, I might have seen that actually. I might have, it, dude, like his, I said, I feel like I have seen some of his videos. You, his tent wasn't even zipped up; like he left it open all night. Like he was out in a quickness, dude. So, yeah, he's uh, he's got some cool ones, and one that wasn't paranormal related that is a cool video on his channel is he stays in the shittiest rated hotel in his town, and it's like less than a one star. <laughs> and dude it's freaking gross as one would expect and uh the only five star rating that that hotel had was from a guy that was on the run from the police he was like it's a great place to stay to avoid the police and that's yeah. hilarious so that was a pretty cool one 
But yeah, you know, he's thinking out of the box, dude. I like that he's got a couple ideas already. He's got the Mothman trip planned. I think we gave him a couple cool ideas with Bachelor's Grove and then the land between the lakes. So I think he's gonna I think he's gonna be all right, dude. Definitely have him back on. I think uh, the fact that YouTube is in people's head too, like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna be a YouTuber <laughs> from a young age. That's kind of a trip too, like connecting with someone who came up in that era like immediately with youtube like I'll, I'll just be an influencer oh i'll just be youtube from a young age like that being said i'm glad i wasn't making a bunch of youtube videos when i was little because i'd be laughing too like he said it was cringe looking back at it him just little screaming into the camera everybody would have been doing the same oh no doubt no doubt and but you know not everybody has the persistence and the willingness to laugh at themselves and move on from it and grow and you know that's you know, not everybody can do that. How many people that started when they were 10 are still making videos eight years later, you, you know, True. like seriously making. So, so, you know, that's cool, man. You know, I like that. And like, like you said earlier, if anybody else is listening that wants to reach out to us, that wants to come on or would like maybe to have us on, you can do so. There's a number of ways you can get a hold of us. Conspiracy and chill at yahoo.com. You could reach me on Twitter at Sawbuck Mike and same on Instagram. And Mr. Headhunter Higgins does not fuck with twitter or x but he is on instagram under headhunter higgins believe it or not and we also have a joint account and that is two truth seekers pretty much on all the different social media platforms so i don't know what you're waiting for if you haven't done all that shit yet yeah i've got to get that thousand subscribers on my uh wrestling channel on youtube headhunter higgins so help me out help me out fans help me out friends let's go yeah and as bank said it's not just about getting to that thousand uh, subscriber threshold it's about having a certain amount of watch hours yeah it shows what i know which uh well you know that's kind of when they sneak in there they also uh hit us with copyrights for certain things here and there but you know we're not making money on them anyway so we don't have to change anything <laughs> yet i guess i got a long way to go no you're almost there bro and they won't hit you with no copyrights as long as you know don't have any certain kind of no, music. I, in I've the background. gotten copyrighted by yeah some of the fucking matches that I've had at wrestling, whereas the music that was being played was and too that's loud. All, and yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That's just but you know that could be edited out also. You know we could always edit the music look. out and then upload it separate. You know, definitely like subscribe and do all that good shit as Tom and I said. But also, if you want to become one of the very first conspiracy and chill syndicate members you can do so patreon we have a couple of different levels there if you want to support us but you don't want to be a member of the syndicate you can also uh, support us for as little as three dollars a month by clicking the support button if you don't want to do that but you're you know you're just like hey i really like you guys this podcast but don't have any money no problem just give us a five-star review believe it or not that shit really helps and we have been noticing more and more people doing that so we truly appreciate it. We're trying to grow this thing. Take it to the next level. And uh, nighty night. Keep that butthole tight. Stay away from pedophiles. <laughs>